Hello there and in this video I'm gonna tell you how you can work with domain names so domain name is basically the website name for example when you go to google.com that google.com is actually a domain name or for example if you go to facebook.com that is another domain name so any website that you visit has got the domain name most probably but domain name is optional you can hit the website if you know the IP address directly but for humans the words are much better to remember than numbers and that's why domain names were invented now each domain can have multiple subdomains for example www is very popular a subdomain every website has this subdomain by default and you can have other subdomains as well for example live.xyz.com something like that so subdomain is basically just the extension before the main main name main domain name prefix when you buy the domain you have to register your domain with registrar and some of the popular registrars are GoDaddy, AWS, Bluehost, etc. etc. So there are a lot of other registrars, but these are some of the popular registrars. So whenever you want to buy or register your domain name, you will go to these websites and then buy your domain name, provided that it is available. Most of the domain names have already been taken. So it becomes a little bit difficult to find the domain name. For example, abc.com you will not get it bbc.com you will not get it so lots of domain names have already been taken next thing is domain name servers so domain name servers basically are used to find the information or store the information related to the domain for example if you buy www.xyz.com from godaddy then when you buy that domain there are a lot of records associated with that domain for example the owner of the domain address of that person then ip address related to that domain name so there is a lot of information like that and who saves this information is domain name servers so if you purchase the domain name from godaddy for example godaddy has name servers then AWS has name servers as well. So most of the leading registrars will also have the domain name servers. But it is not necessary that if you purchase your domain name from GoDaddy, you have to use their name servers. It is possible that you purchase the or your GoDaddy is your registrar, but you, you are using the name server of Cloudflare. Or if you purchased the domain name at AWS, Amazon Web Services. But it is possible that you are using DNS of Cloudflare or uh, say GoDaddy. So you can mix and match. You can have one register and you can have different name servers. Then another thing is domain name or uh, domain name hosting address. So once you purchase or register your domain name, you also want to store the files for that particular domain. So whenever somebody goes or accesses that domain name on the browser, they should be able to see some files. Now to serve the files, you will have to host your website. So website hosting or the domain name hosting is basically storing all your files of your website or the domain in a specific server. Now again, you can have different hosting address or the hosting provider. For example, you can purchase the domain from the GoDaddy but your hosting address is from the different provider for example Heroku or DigitalOcean or Linode or EC2 from AWS Amazon Web Services so domain name hosting address can be different to your domain name register or the domain name servers and whenever you purchase any hosting plan you will get the dedicated IP address. So you have to use this IP address and then link this IP address with your domain name. So I will explain that little bit, little while. 
Now next thing is uh, DNS port. So DNS servers run on this port by default 53 and that is why AWS domain name service is called as R53. So just uh, for the extra information I'm telling this. Uh, so AWS has got domain name service and uh, R53 they call it and that is because domain name uh, servers run on 53 port by default and R stands for out. Okay, that's it. And our next one is DNS records uh, related to the domain names. As I said before, each domain name has multiple records. Okay, for example, the owner of the domain name, the email address, actual uh, physical address, and then uh, IP address associated with the domain, a mail server associated with the domain. So, if you want to uh, save all these details or the records of that domain, you can uh, save it using something called as DNS records and there are various types for example SOA that is start of authority so this record stores information about the owner of the domain email address physical address etc the next one is name server record NS so basically it is name servers domain name servers so each domain can have domain name servers so this record will tell for the given domain name what is the name server for that particular domain next one is very important the e that is address a stands for the address or the fully qualified domain name so basically this record maps the domain name with the actual ip address so that's where your domain name gets converted to the IP address because to make the connection to your website or the web server IP4 address is required or the IP6 address is required without IP6 or IP4 address the connection cannot be made and that's why this record is very important if you do not provide this record people will not find your web server the next one is double a double a so this is actually uh, again address but it is ip6 address next one is ptr this is opposite of a record so in a record what happens is we are mapping domain name with the address but in ptr we are reversing it so in ptr we convert the ip address to the domain name Next one is CNAME. This is called as canonical uh, name. It maps one domain to another domain. For example, you had a different domain and then you are changing or, um, or migrating to another domain. Then in that case, you can use that. So one domain to another domain mapping. Next one is MX record that is mail server record. So this record tells what is the mail server for this particular domain. For example, let's say you purchase one uh, domain example.com and then you want to also create one email uh, server associated with that domain for example abc at xyz.com like that you can people can send you the email uh, emails so whenever somebody sends an email what happens is the mail server uh, will go and then check what is the mx record for this particular domain and then from there it will find out what is the actual uh, email server and then it will send that email to that particular server so that is how uh, different types of records dns records are created and it is important that you understand all these records because whenever you want to uh, set up a website you will have to edit these details and this record is very important this e uh, especially if when you are uh, having domain name with another provider and uh, hosting with another provider so at that point of time what we will have to do is uh, you will have to find out the IP address from the hosting provider and then put that IP address in the A record of this DNS in the registrar's uh, settings. Now uh, let us say you have configured your domain name like uh, you set all these records uh, saved all the information. So once you save it uh, most of the times what happens is you have to wait for one hour to up to 24 hours for all this information uh, to be propagated to all the servers on the internet and then uh, you can access your server otherwise 
it will not find your website so you have to wait and after waiting how you will find out like uh, your domain name uh, is ready to ready for use so what you have to do is you have to execute some commands or you can also uh, go to this website foo.is or site 24 by 7 what is my ip.com so all these websites provide you the information about the domain so if your domain is set up correctly what happens is these websites will tell you uh, like uh, the records associated with your domain so for example if I go here let us say I want to find out the DNS records for a specific domain so this one then let us see so as you can see the information has come through so for that domain softforce.org you can see the name of the registrar is amazon registrar who is server is this one who is dot registrar dot amazon dot com then the referral url registrar dot amazon dot com the status then there is an important dates uh, related to the domain so every domain has got expiry date so as you can see this domain is expiring on 2022-67 then this domain was registered on 2015 and it was updated on 2021-53 and as you can see the name servers for this domain are these ones so I purchased this domain at Amazon but you can see my name servers are these ones and I'm using the cloud flare to proxy all the uh, requests that are coming to uh, this softhost.org so what will happen is that all the requests uh, will uh, come to cloud flare first and then from the cloud flare those requests will be forwarded to actual server that is softhost.org so there are uh, several advantages of using Cloudflare. In uh, upcoming videos, I will explain why you should use the Cloudflare. So this is about the register and uh, important dates and all this information is available. Let us see uh, DNS records as well. So DNS records for the softforce.org. You can see uh, there are several records associated with this particular uh, domain. And all these records are available here. So there is a SOA record, there is a NS record, there is a record. Here you can see the IP address mapping is happening. And then there is a these uh, records as well. Double -A -double -A. That's it. That's how you can uh, find out your uh, domain name record. If it is propagated or not. Or uh, you can also fire this command from the command prompt as well. If you don't like to go to the websites, you can uh, fire up these commands and then uh, see if you can uh, get the response. So let us fire these commands here. And as you can see, it is showing the IP addresses. So here it is showing two IP addresses because uh, I have set up this uh, Cloudflare as the proxy for my server and that's why it is showing the two IP addresses here. That's it. So if you have any questions setting up your domain name and uh, hosting or mapping the IP addresses, let me know through the comments and I will definitely try to help you. We can have one-on-one -on -one session, one -on -one sessions as well and uh, video chats through which I will help you. Thanks for watching this video.